So Gareth Southgate, for the, the manager or coach, I don't know what the proper title is, it doesn't matter. For England, he chose this selection. He chose what you would call either a 5-2-3 or a 3-4-3, three, three, depending on the position of these guys, right? Defensively, it's, it's five, right? The same thing that Germany are playing. And the reason he did that, right? Why did he do this? Why did he pick five when they'd played a 4-3-3 or some? They played some four back system every single game up until the Germany game. Well, if you look at how Germany had success in the group stages of the tournament, the one game they really went crazy, the one game they really went crazy was against Portugal. What did Portugal do? Portugal played a typical four back system. So why was Germany able to score so many goals and why was Gossens, Robin Gossens for Atalanta, why was he such a monster in that game? Well, let's pretend that this is Portugal for a second, right? And this we're playing like this something, right? Something like this, I don't know, some some typical 4-3-3, something similar to what Portugal was playing, right? I know they didn't exactly play this, but you, you get it. You figure out what it is. So in attack, uh, Timo Werner didn't play that game, but it, 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 again, it doesn't matter. Just, just understand real quick what happened. So you have Timo Werner coming in here. He's he's attracting these two center backs. These two center backs are looking at him. Kai Havertz and Thomas Muller are pushing up here. They're drawing uh, one of these guys in every time, right? The wi the wingers on Portugal, on like most teams, are like they're gonna do a job defensively, but they're not gonna you know they're not gonna be great. So they're gonna get back a little bit, but. Kimmich was able to get down a couple occasions past the winger and this guy the left back would be uh, focused on Kai Havertz and Kai, uh, Joshua Kimmich was able to exploit the spaces get back here and then as he makes a run here and he makes a run here and he makes a run here they all get sucked in here right the defense of England would get sucked in here Robin would get back here the cross would come in right blah 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 free free shot for Gossens and he was able to make a he was able to make hay so the reason Gareth Southgate selected this system which is an identical copy of what Germany was doing right it's the same exact formation is because it's going to create a lot of man-to-man -man scenarios it's really simple there's not a lot of thinking right every there's there's going to be someone in your position almost at all times so you don't have to think like wait should I be covering this guy is never going to be in a position where he has to think wait do I have to be here or here or here like where do I have to be Luke Shaw is never going to have to have that complication He's always going to have Kimmich. Uh, this is this would be Harry Maguire. He's always going to have Havertz. John Stones could focus on Timo Werner. Kyle Walker could focus on Thomas Muller. And when Gossam's got upfield, which he always does, Kieran Trippier could just focus on him, right? It's super simple. And it's kind of Gareth Southgate betting on, like, let's, let's push these guys up too, right? Just to make the point even more. It's almost a man system. They're almost playing man in a, uh, at, at, oops, ignore that line. They're basically playing man at this level, which is not something you see a lot. What that causes is, as you see, there is no obvious space for anyone to pass the ball to, right? Like, like Manuel Nora gets the ball, you know, these guys will come back and get it, but like, there's no obvious pass for him. These guys obviously won't press this high all the time. They'll be a little bit deeper. They'll give them a little bit of space for the center backs. But that's why you would see the center backs passing it around a lot. This this is a strategy betting on that like, hey, if we just play man to man and we match up everywhere and everything is super simplified, Gareth Southgate is saying, I think my players are better at doing this stuff than your players are at doing this stuff, right? So Gareth Southgate is playing Declan Rice and uh, Phillips. I always forget his first name. I, I apologize. K Phil. I know it's K Phillips. I know he plays for. I don't remember if it's Kevin or Kieran. I know he's Kieran Trippier. I don't know why it messes me up, but regardless, that doesn't matter. They're both, for their club teams, for West Ham and for Leeds, uh, Rice and Phillips are defensively oriented, right? They usually play as, like, sixes. They're, they're, their main job is to stop everything getting to their defenders. They're both playing together here, so they're shutting stuff down. Tony Cruz is an amazing passer. Everyone knows this. He is, like, his ability to distribute the ball around the field is top-notch, second to, like, basically nobody. He's, he's amongst the best in the world. But he's not the best defender, right? He's not going to shut everything down in front of these guys. That's not really what he does. He doesn't. He works hard, right? He's not a bad player by any means. That's not what I'm saying. But let's look up Tony Crow's, like, how often he's doing defensive work. Yeah, you see it here. Based on uh, football reference stats, which are compiled compiled using other, you know, other stats, 
aggregators. No, they're the aggregator. They, but whatever, the point is, he's not an amazing defender. Uh, again, these stats are obviously skewed because Real Madrid are a really good team. And they, at least, you know, compared to other teams in their league, they generally have more of the ball. So, the, of course, like per 90, he's not going to have to do as many pressures or tackles or interceptions. But still, you look at a guy like Casemiro on that team, you're going to see that he does a lot more of that stuff. Yeah, you see, like even, even on a team that doesn't have to do it a lot, he still does it at a decent level, right? He's still able to get a high amount of clearances and blocks and interceptions and, you know, all that stuff. Uh, same with Leon Goretzka. Leon Goretzka is a little more well-rounded, but again, he's a very good attacking player. So this this is an extremely attacking lineup for Germany that worked in the other games because they were able to find overloads and mismatches. And by the way, this is part of the reason why Hungary did such a good job against Germany is because they played a five back and it simplified their defense. And it wasn't, you know, it's just like, hey, can you be in the way? Germany against England was like, hey, who has better players? They, England, were trusting that they could shut down the game. Let's get the ball somewhere where it needs to be. Oops. They were trusting that they could shut down the game and create more opportunities, which ended up working out. Now, all that being said, it's still a super fine margin. Let's look at the XG ultimately for the game. Let me pop that up on the screen real quick. So you look at the XG for the game. This is from Michael Cayley on Twitter, by the way. He does these. You should follow that Twitter account. It's very good because it's literally just tweeting out stats. Uh, it's not even just stats. It's tweeting out XG after most soccer games in the world, like major soccer games. So you see the XG was ultimately really close. Like England and Germany it was 1.4 to 1.3. So this is a super tight game. Uh, the two chances, the two big chances that we're going to talk about that Germany had were Timo Werner had a chance early. Uh, it was almost a 1v1 against Jordan Pickford, couldn't get it. And Thomas Mueller had one later where he just, he basically did everything right until the last moment and just kicked the ball wide, right? And so you're going to tell me if they had two such massive chances, why was the system so smart? Why was it such a, so smart to play this? Well, one, we talked about how the biggest threats for Germany in the Portugal game and why they managed to score four goals were the wingbacks. Well, part of the problem in this game is that when England had the ball, you would see Luke Shaw right here. Uh, let's put Harry Kane up here. Although Harry Kane drifts around, but let's say he's back here occupying this guy. Luke Shaw and Kieran Trippier, Trippier, Trippier would be all the way up here, pushing super high, even higher than Saka and Sterling. And what does that do? Well, Gossens, that's his job. That's his man. So now, now look where Gossens has to be. Robin Gossens has to be all the way here. Look where Kimmich has to be. He has to be all the way back here, accounting for these guys. Because Ginter and Rudiger have to keep an eye on these guys, right? The people that come into their zone. Starling is generally going to be on the left, and Saka was generally staying on the right. So look what happens every time England have the ball. Look at where, let's just say, I don't know, Kyle Walker has the ball. He would drop in here, whatever. Look at where Gussens and Kimmich were. Whenever they got the ball, they couldn't explode into attack. Let's say, like, you know, Kyle Walker kicks it over here, and let's say Harry Kane loses the ball, and Hummels gets it, and he finds Rudiger here he can't get the quick outlet to Gussens going down the line because look how deep he is already right he has to be really deep defending Trippier and that was Germany's biggest problem in counter-attacking which was made it really difficult for them they didn't have the easy outlets in Kimmich and Gussens getting up the field because the wing backs for England were on purpose this wasn't like them going you know rogue uh rogue going rogue and just deciding to do this they decided they were going to be uh southgate decided they were going to be as high as possible in possession providing width and staying up the field to make to force germany's wing backs to have to account for them and make it harder for them to get up the field when they got the ball back now let's let's talk about real quick why did timo Werner get that first chance that almost could have put them ahead in the first half all right okay so the way this goal happens, or I'm sorry, the way this goal attempt from Germany happens is that there's the clearance, it, the ball comes up the field, Harry Kane loses the header out to Matthias Ginter, and look at where England is now, right? Kyle Walker spread out here because he's trying to uh, provide width. He, I think I think it might have been a pick for the kick out, I'm not sure. So he's trying to provide an option or something like that. But whatever, the ball comes here. Oops, nope, ignore that line. Harry Kane doesn't really win it. Goretzka gets it. And so here's Phillips. He's stepping up to come and close out. Declan Rice sees Thomas Muller step up, come back like this 
to come receive the ball. So Declan Rice sees uh, Phillips leave that area to come press him, and he comes across to cover uh, for Muller, right? To cover Muller and take away that pass. Now, as you can see, there's a big problem because now Kai Havertz, who is a very talented player, is in way too much space. So he steps up here. Let me continue the play going. He steps up here. John Stones has to come and cover Timo Werner, who, as we all know, uh, all his problems with finishing that he's had with Chelsea this year, speed-wise, there's not a lot of people faster than him, right? Especially on this field and this back line, it's pretty much just Kyle Walker. And Kyle Walker is, unfortunately, just too far out to play. He's starting to close down here. But now uh, Timo Werner is in one-on-one. -on -one. Kai Havertz is running with the ball, and he's able to slip in this pass. And boom, boom, boom. There's Timo Werner, and Timo Werner does what he does. And Jordan Pickford saves it because Timo Werner, has, I guess, is just lacking confidence. So, you know, it feels like lazy analysis to say he's just not confident, but I have no idea why else. He's missed so many chances this year. But it was just a mistake. It was a series of mistakes, right? It's not a tactical mistake. It's just, it's really hard to account for three forwards when they start dropping into the midfield, which is what makes so hard to when the wingers are Thomas Muller and Kai Havertz. They both drop in at the same time, and it's also off a turnover. Create some confusion. You, maybe Kyle Walker should have closed down the area quicker, but it's tough because Kai Havertz is also running one-on-one -on -one against a Declan Rice who's trying to close him down, but doesn't, he just isn't able to get there quick enough before Kai Havertz can slip in Timo Werner who misses the chance. So that's how they got the first opportunity. Now let's talk about how Germany got the second opportunity and why I don't believe it's a tactical mistake. It was just player mistakes in the moment. Okay, so at this point in the game, there's been two substitutions, one for each team. Uh, Jack Grealish has come in for uh, Saka and Serge Gnabry has come in for Timo Werner. Grealish was part of the goal, right? Uh, Raheem Sterling came in here with the ball, dribbles pie like five people finds uh the, the, the harry kane who finds jack grealish uh, all the whole time you know the ball is bop 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 uh luke shaw comes in behind and raheem sterling finds space and while on side is able to bop make that goal okay so that has happened at this point so it's now 1-0 so what happens now that leads to this goal let me rewind it here to make sure i see it correctly raheem sterling is dribbling here with the ball and to, uh, Tony Cruz, even though I made the jokes about him defensively before, is actually doing a good job of pressing Raheem Sterling. Raheem Sterling does a lazy pass. I don't know if he mishits it or Tony Cruz just kicks him a little bit. And so what happens is he kicks it into this area. And as you can see, it's a really bad area because one, the fullbacks or wingbacks in this scenario, in this scenario are doing what we talked about before, which is uh, Luke Shaw and Kieran Trippier being very high up the field to provide width to pr let uh, to one to keep the wingbacks pin pinned back and also to allow Raheem Sterling and in this situation Jack Grealish to come inside and be creative, right? Not just have to be wide players and zip in crosses and hope good stuff happens. But now they're in a bad scenario. Kai Havertz is running with the ball here. And Harry Maguire is a little too far upfield. That so first of all, the biggest mistake is obviously Raheem Sterling, right? The the way England are playing, like they cannot give the ball up cheaply because look at how high up they are, right? Like it's a really bad spot. And Raheem, Raheem Sterling not only loses the ball, but loses it in a place. Like it's one thing if he loses the ball trying to dribble past Tony Rudiger and Rudiger rips him, and then they can make a quick press, right? They can like quickly press and shut down all the passes, right? They can shut all that down. That's not what happened. He loses the ball and kicks it into like the worst area possible, which is Kai Havertz coming in here with the ball. John Stones is in a decent position, comes down here to try to take away the, the position, but it's too late. It's too late, uh, and Kai Havertz is too smart. He sees the run that Thomas Muller is making because he's obviously too smart. And let's see it about right here. John Stones realizes how bad is like that he's not going to be able to get to Kai Havertz before he passes it, so he transitions to try to run back here. But at that point, Kai Havertz has also realized it, makes the pass, and Thomas Miller is off. Like, ignore the lines. I'm sorry about that. And he's off. He's running. John Stones is chasing him, but John Stones is fast, but not fast enough to catch another professional footballer. The person who is fast enough is uh, 
Kyle Walker, who almost gets there. It's actually pretty... If you can see the highlight, go back and look at it. Like, how much distance Kyle Walker covers really quickly is impeccable. Uh, but Harry Maguire is here, too. But he's behind. He's never going to catch up. He, again, it's not because he's a bad athlete, but Thomas Muller is also not a bad athlete. And you're just not going to catch him in a dead sprint. Right? And he sees... Uh, Thomas Muller does a great job. Gets here and sees Jordan Pickford starting to lean to his left a little bit and kicks it into the extremely open area that is uh, Jordan Pickford's right side. Oh, I didn't switch the keepers. Sorry, sorry about that. Because he should be shooting at Jordan Pickford. It would be weird if you're shooting at Manuel Neuer. He's shooting at Jordan Pickford and just misses, right? So this, England got very fortunate in this, right? That That's why the XG, if we pull it up again, was so close. It was not, it's not, you know, it, it, it was a super close game, which is why the, the plan for Thomas Southgate, Th Gareth Southgate, I don't know why I make him Thomas, for Southgate was essentially like, let's all match up one-on-one, -on -one, and I think my players will come out with more good opportunities. And that's what happened. And uh, very quickly after that opportunity, that missed opportunity by Thomas Muller, let's see how far, how far later is the England goal. It's not even five minutes later. Uh, they catch Germany in like bad transition. Jack Grealish gets in behind on the left side here. And finds Harry Kane for a really easy header. Well, it was actually a pretty difficult header for what it was. But he made it look easy because he's a world-class striker. And, that's what he does. and so that's how England won this game. And I think it would be lazy to look at this and think that they're just going to play this way always. This was a very clear, intelligent, tactical choice by Southgate. That I think my players can do a job one v in a lot of 1v1s and make stuff happen. The way Raheem Sterling created the first goal by like beating two or three guys and forcing a lot of open area and then getting Harry Kane in space who found Jack Grealish, who found Luke Shaw and put him in behind. It's just like, it's really beautiful effort, but it also requires required some individuality, which he felt England could do while remaining solid defensively, even though they did create, uh, give up two chances. So I don't know. I'm really impressed by England. I think they're a really good team. Even the they're like the games like the Scotland game where they did, you know they drew, they're really impressive, and I think you really have to like give them a good chance to go all the way because they have the talent of all the best teams, right? They have relatively equal talent to all the best teams in the world. But I, this is why it's so easy to watch England and think they're gonna win the tournament because they have the talent that everyone else has. But tactically, even if it's not entertaining, they're putting themselves in a position to win every game. And so, yeah, uh, it's coming home.